Hi, I'm Betsy. Welcome to your 30-minute all-levels yoga class. Take a comfortable seat on your yoga mat. Sit cross-legged or any way that works for you. We'll take our hands down along the thighs and sit up nice and tall through the spine. In doing this, close your eyes. And really transport yourself into this time, into this place for yoga practice. A practice that is just for you. Your best health, your best mental and emotional well-being. Tuck the chin down to the chest and move the right ear over towards the right shoulder. As you do that, still sit up tall through the spine and relax the shoulders themselves. Walk the left hand out to the side. Maybe the fingertips can just brush against the ground still. And you might notice that this is a little more stretch than when the hand is on the thigh. And you check in. Yeah, that still feels good to me. And I'm going to up it one more time. Take the right hand on top of the left ear and give it not pressure down, but like a lengthening more up and out to the side. And it's again sort of another added bonus. You get more stretch, more length in a way that feels good here. If the answer is yes, you keep it. If the answer is not sure or no, maybe you go back to where you were before. And then both hands come back to the thighs and gradually chin down to the chest. Go over, second ear, second shoulder. And we're doing the same work. You start just ear to shoulder and then walk the opposite hand out, fingertips to the side. Measure if that feels good, better. The answer is yes, stick with it. If you want even the next level up, it's left hand on top of the right ear and trying to give it that little bit of further extension. And you'll get to know that this is how I teach. We're always adding on like one thing and the next with time to check in. Is that still the right fit for you? Go chin down to your chest again. And then lift the head, open the eyes if they were closed. So as we progress in our practice today and always, just a constant check-in with yourself. Is this helping me? And every time the answer is yes, we just keep moving in that direction. Sometimes the answer is yes, this is challenging and I want to keep trying. Sometimes it might be, this is challenging and it's too much. I'm going to back off. I just wanted to start and open, give ourselves that reminder. Take it up, take it down, stay with me, all that works. Cat and cow here. Every inhale, pull the chest forward and through, eyes and tailbone up. Every exhale, around the back, press down through the hands and knees. Drop the head. Just back and forth, back and forth. This is also a really great motion that you can do not only on all fours, but if you're sitting in a chair, just moving the spine back and forth or standing, we can always find a way to get in a little movement. Downward facing dog. Lengthen your stride a bit, tuck the toes, and then lift the hips. And we'll just keep moving a little bit, shift the feet back and forth, walk the dog. Give the head a little bit of a shake, yes, no. Or 
We'll see a lot of the same movements each week as we practice together, and then always some different movements as well. That's why we call it a practice. Repetition is always a good thing for ourselves and creating unique, different ways to move. Also healthy for the body. We do a little bit of both. Okay, walk your hands back to your feet and then let yourself hang here like rag doll. Be heavy in the upper body. Hold on to your elbows. Sway a little bit from side to side. Let out the breath. And nice and slow, roll all the way up to standing. Stack each vertebrae, roll the shoulders up and back a few times. We'll roll the shoulders forward and down as well. Okay, let's walk to the front of the yoga mat. Have your feet hip distance apart, or maybe a little closer if that feels right to you. I like to keep my feet about hip distance. From mountain pose, reach your arms up to the sky, get as tall as you can. And then exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees to touch the ground. Half lift, extend from your hips out to the crown of the head. Once that gets tight, walk the hands up higher. And then step back to plank position. This is like our top of the push-up. Bring the heels in close together, squeeze them in, squeeze the glutes, lengthen your tailbone, tone your belly. And look a little forward, a little past the hands. Make and then keep the arms as straight as you can here. If you tend to hyperextend in the joints and your elbows, it might feel as though you have a little bend in the elbows to actually keep the arms straight. All right, keep that strong in the belly. Anytime, toes or knees is fine here in plank position. Find where you can hold, where you can stay strong and steady. And then everyone knees down and lie flat down onto the mat. Reach your hands behind you. Turn the palms to the sky and lift everything up. Lift, lift, lift. Lower it down, press back to child's pose. It's hips to the heels. And then change to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes and lift the hips. Take about three breaths here. Every time we breathe in the yoga practice, typically in and out of the nose. I know that that's harder sometimes. Let a breath out through the mouth anytime that's your better bet. And then look forward in between the hands and walk all the way to the front of the mat. Lift up halfway. Forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Bring the palms together, center of the chest. All right, that's our first sun salutation. Sun salutations are usually the most complex movement that we do in the practice. So we get them right in here at the beginning. Brains fresh and ready to go. Let's do it two more times. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half lift. And then step back to plank. Lower flat down against the yoga mat. Reach the hands again back behind you. Lift everything that you can up. For some folks, leaving the feet down, just lifting the chest up is best. And then lower it all the way down. Press back to child's pose. Change to downward facing dog. Linking all of the movements together is indeed something that helps keep our brain firing. Positive part of this yoga practice as well, mental stimulation. Look forward in between your hands and walk your way all the way to the top but a little different type of mental stimulation than you might be used to in the rest of the day. So it just takes us a little time to get into it. Half lift, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. And palms together, center of the chest. 
We'll go one more time. Lift up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Do your best to make an L shape in the body. Think about what that looks like and then create the shape. Step back to plank. Lower your knees and then drop all the way down. Take the hands back behind you again. Lift everything that you can up. This one's always hard. Squeeze in the glutes, lift the legs, lift the arms. Lower it down, press back to child's pose. And then change to downward facing dog. Couple rounds of breath. Look in between the hands, make your way forward. Come up halfway, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. And bring the palms together, center of the chest. Take a couple more breaths here. If it feels okay to you, close the eyes. Sometimes that makes me a little too dizzy after the movement of sun salutations. If that's the case for you too, just keep your eyes open. Gaze straight ahead, nice and soft though. Relax the arms and give the whole body a little bit of a wiggle. All right. Stand in the center of your mat and take a wide stance. Point your toes straight ahead, the heels straight back. And when we say wide stance, when I say wide stance, if you extend your arms out, what I'm usually asking for, what I'm looking for is for your ankles and your wrists to be about stacked on top of each other, something along those lines. Do our best to find what works and really extend out here. I'm already getting a nice little stretch on the outer uh, thighs and also through the inner thighs. Okay, let's take it over to the ground. So take the hands straight down in front of you. Fingertips under the line of the shoulders and try to extend from your hips out to the head. Today, keep the left fingertips on the floor. And uh, if you're one to have a tighter low back or hamstrings, bend both of your knees here and it'll make it more doable. If it works for you, keep the legs straight. And uh, let's take the right hand out to the side and then twist up to the sky. Sometimes I, I'm a little more specific about things. I just want you to find what is working. Keep the left hand down, take the, um, sorry, switch that. So right hand down, take the left arm out and up and add in a little twist. As long as this is feeling good for you. Stay with it, a couple more breaths. Don't worry about specifics. All right, and then we'll bring the hands back down, a little bend in the knees so you can come all the way upright and feet all the way back together. With the feet about hip distance apart, take your hands to your hips and let's shift into our balance series. Stand on your left leg and bring your right foot into tree pose. You can start and stay low, bring the foot a little bit higher above the ankle to the calf. A little helping hand perhaps to sit the foot above the knee onto your thigh. Okay, your standing leg, push into the lifted leg and push your lifted leg into the standing foot, standing leg. Lift the arms all the way up to the sky. Even if you fall off balance, we keep trying to do the work. If you fall off, you just come back to it. From the muscles, strong to the bone, think navel towards the spine to keep the abdomen engaged. Find your spot, something out in front of you that won't move or change. Keep your focus, your gaze there. And let's release. Lower the arms, lower leg. 
How'd it go? <laughs> I do tree pose pretty much every yoga practice. And uh, some days it's right there, it's on point. Other days, no matter what, I'm a little clumsy, I'm falling off base. And uh, that's just information that I'm taking in. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong, right? Um, go a little bit higher, a little bit lower than the knee. But certainly if my balance is a little more off one day than the next, more on point one day than the next, I can see how that uh, gives me information to help with my practice off of the mat, my life off of the mat too. Just little hints about <laughs> how this movement can help us. Okay, we're here on the second side. Give yourself a couple more breaths with it. And then release the arms and release the leg. Good. One more balance in this um, series. I want to make like a star shape. Push down onto your left foot, bend the knee a little bit, and take the other leg out to the side. Extend the arms wide as well. So we'll call this one phase one. Remember, we started with that in the head neck rolls. So we're here, and we're staying here, and we're working here. Try lifting the leg off of the ground, see if that works. All still well and good. Can you go to a straight standing leg? Extend the arms even to a little more of a maximum reach. Keep with your eye gates. And then try bending the knee, lowering the toes, release the hands and come back to the center. Other side. So I'm going to start with a soft bend in the knee. Foot out. I really should start here with the hands down and a lifted chest. And we'll call this one phase one. Start and stay with phase one or you go to two. Stay with two or go to three with the leg lifted. Stay with three or go to four with two straight legs and extend a little more in all directions, maybe even a little more tip, a little more tip to the side. And we're good. Shake it all the way back out. Come back to the front end of the yoga mat. I think 30 minutes goes by pretty quick in a practice, but it can be really full and encompassing whole thing. That's all we need. Right foot forward, step the left foot back. We're like two thirds of the way done here. As you keep the right foot forward, left foot back in this lunge, have your feet about hip distance apart. Try scooting that back foot out a little bit more as you stay with it for a few breaths. And again, phase one, hands stay on the hips, or two, arms overhead, or three, take the left hand towards the right knee and add a twist. And then go back to two with the arms overhead, hands at the hip. Fold the torso forward and place the hands on the ground now. Can you make the front leg straighter and then more bent? Straighter and more bent. One way to make this a little more accessible is both hands on the inside of the leg. You might not be going all the way to a straight front leg. Just kind of working in. For me, it's usually the sixth, seventh time in the rounds here that this starts to feel a little better. Okay, so let's give it one more. And then step the back foot all the way up to the front and gradually come up to standing. Second side, so feet are still hip distance apart, left foot forward. Step the right foot back, take your time, inch it back. I'm looking for a straight back leg. And the hips gradually go a little lower 
down towards the mat, but try to keep them square. So in this case, left hip back, right hip a little bit forward, so the front of the hip bones are still facing the short front side of the mat. Okay, we're strong and steady here. We're at one, maybe going to two with the arms overhead, and then adding in the twist, right arm across the left thigh. To get back up to the top. Hands to the waist, hinge forward. So put your seat back as you bring your torso down and forward and then drop the hands on either side. You're either staying there or both hands can go to the inside of your foot. That just makes things a little more doable. And I do really mean just a little bit more. So it's just finding always what works, what doesn't work. Go back and forth, shift the weight. Two or towards straight on that front leg and then bent. We're not overthinking it, we're just noticing. Okay, two more times there. And then again, step your back foot all the way up to the front of the mat. And gradually come all the way up to standing. Mountain pose. Okay, break the pose, give it a little bit of a shake. And let's come back down to all fours. Return to the cat and cow that we did at the beginning of practice. Maybe, just maybe, noticing that uh, there's a little bit more range in here. At least with just a little more warmth in the body through this movement, a little easier. And then child's pose, knees um, a little wider than the hips, big toes together, sit back and reach your arms out in front of you. Let the arms be relaxed enough that also your forehead can come down to the ground, whether it's on a cushion of the arms or all the way against the mat. And right now, this is what I call a passive pose. I'm not asking you to try to do anything more except just to stay with it. If you have tenderness in the knees and child's pose does not feel good to you, you might be more upright with the seat a little higher, but still your chest forward and down. If bringing your chest into an inverted shape doesn't work for you, you could also find the benefits of this pose by being upright and kneeling back on the heels. So any of those three positions that best suits you today. Give it about three more breaths. And then if you're down in child's pose, do come upright so that you're sitting back on your heels. Take a really easy twist to one direction. And an easy twist to the second direction. Come back to the center. 
So if you're just getting to know me, I want to point out that I think that finding time for yourself to release and to relax is super important. That being said, I don't always give us a long shavasana, that final relaxation pose. I don't always do that right at the end of class. Today, I'm gonna give us ample time. And I'm saying this now, giving this here as a reminder that if you don't take the time right at the end of the movement practice, I do hope that you will find a few moments of just full release and relaxation for yourself that's not connected to sleeping, that's not connected to the brain working in other ways. So I do this usually midday. I have five minutes, literally five minutes. I set a timer on my clock and uh, I close my eyes. I'm in a seated position when I do that. You could also be lying down just to remind ourselves that it is important to slow down, to fully relax and release. This practice through movement gives us some of that. This will give us even more. All right, so find a shift here to lie all the way back. If lying all the way back isn't the best fit for you right now, you could sit propped against a wall in a chair. I invite you though to be fully still. I'll guide us through two minutes here of this relaxation. And today then I'll close class in this position so that if you have three, four minutes more, I would very much invite you to stay. For now, bring your attention and your awareness down to the tips of your toes. Say to yourself, I am relaxed. I am released in my toes, in my feet, in my ankles. My lower legs, my knees, and my upper legs are released and relaxed. Envision the trunk of your body from the lowest part of the trunk traveling up to mid trunk all the way to your chest, shoulders, upper back. I am released. I am relaxed. From my tailbone, low back, mid back and upper back. I am released. I am relaxed. And then from your shoulders, upper arms, elbows, your forearms, down into the hands and fingers, I am released, I am relaxed. Travel again from your fingertips, through the hand, wrist, the entire arm to your shoulders. Again, I am released, I am relaxed. In my neck, my head, my face is released and relaxed. From the top of my head all the way down, out my arms to my fingers, down my legs to my toes, I am fully released and relaxed.
Again, I invite you to stay in this released, relaxed position for a few more minutes. When you are ready, move along with your day. Thank you for your time for practice. Namaste.